Thanks, Eric. I'm uh, yeah, I got it all, got it all trimmed. <laughs> it was a little, it was a little out of hand before, but it's all good now. I'm just uh, I'm just messing about with stuff. I I don't know why. I just decided to stream and 
here I am. No, uh, no reason or anything. Just, I don't even know what I'm going to do. I'm just doing stuff. Love that. <laughs> awesome. How's that disable that thing? So, oh, you got the other GTI, awesome, so I'm about to head out for a quick drive, thought I'd stop by and say hi. Oh, great, uh, what year was it? I thought it was red, right? Oh, yeah, hey, it's a... There's nothing wrong with that, man. Tried and true. Stuff that works, right? I'm, I'm glad, man. I'm glad you... Hopefully, uh, you've kind of recovered from the accident and everything. And I'm glad you're doing okay. Appreciate you stopping by. That's a log out of windows. <sighs> no thanks. Not right now. <laughs> hey, Steve. How's it going, man? One owner got an inspection, it's in good shape, all good. Excellent. Man, that's that's really the key, right? Like <laughs> Yeah, I know. Uh oh, Steve. about here with some stuff I I don't even know just a heads up I don't even know what I'm doing right now I don't have any plans for the stream I'm just quite literally just felt like pressing the stream button yeah it's Windows Uh, that is the Windows terminal. Um, give me one second. Uh, yeah, this is the Windows terminal. Um, it, you know, has, like, support for, like, PowerShell and... Uh, you know, command prompt stuff, whatever. Um, if you install other Linux distros in WSL, then it will uh, show those as well. So, like, if I hopped into the Microsoft Store. Yeah, yeah, the one they did that, like, crazy, like, promo video or whatever. God, what a sack of crap. Um, so, like, if I open... Like if I search for OpenSUSE, they have a a leap um, leap instance thing here, and you just click install. It'll install it. Once you launch it, it'll extract it, and uh, you can create a user and stuff, and it'll show up in that terminal when I relaunch it. It's pretty neat. Yeah, I kind of like your stream, Steve, but less less cool. So, if I, so it goes through this like installation thing, asks you to like create a new username, password, and then yeah, sure. So I'll close that, and then if I close the Windows terminal and open it again, you can see here that 
OpenSUSE is now an option in here. So I can have a tab for OpenSUSE, a tab for um, Ubuntu. So like, you know, here I got my standard Ubuntu stuff. And then, you know, OpenSUSE here, which you can see they are two separate home folders. Uh, the DirectX support does seem pretty pretty neat, but it's mostly used for like GPU, um, like machine learning stuff, that kind of thing. It's not necessarily to play games, because I mean, why would you play a Linux game <laughs> in Windows? But yeah, it's a it's pretty neat. Um, I don't really have much of a use for the GPU like accelerated machine learning stuff, because that that's beyond me. But it's a pretty neat little thing. Um, no, the terminal does work with just Windows. Um, they have, like, PowerShell here. So this is, you know, standard, um, you know, standard, like, PowerShell stuff. You know. You know, whatever. I can't, I, I haven't done PowerShell in forever, but you get the idea. So one thing they did add... Uh, in the recent version of Windows, which I think is cool, is this package manager called WinGet. So you can, like, do a WinGet search, and it'll show you all the software in the repos. And so you can, like, um, install, like, Windows applications from the command line. Kind of like chocolatey, but... Uh, yeah, so no, it's not. It's not the it's not the Microsoft Store. It's not the Windows Store. It's actually a separate repo that are at software gets added to and embedded and everything. So you get, you know, I mean, it's any number of things. They've been adding tons of stuff to it. Um, like uh, apparently Firefox is in there. So if I do WinGet install Firefox, okay, it tells me here's a few of them, so I can. And get install Mozilla Firefox maybe. <laughs> yeah, they have a. There's like a a thing with like having a multiple of the same kind, and I don't know how to work with it exactly. I've only messed with it a little bit. Um, but I think like Specky was in there, right? That's as a. So if I do like win get install Specky, it'll go through and download Specky, install it, it'll pop up the, the UAC thing. And then just it'll it'll be done in a little bit, and then you, you can launch the application. So they have their own like set, you know, things that they install and all that. Um no, it's it's not integrated into Windows update. I don't know if the update man uh, update facility has been added yet it's still pretty new it's so like now if i so if i run in a specky here this will you know show you like windows information like system information or whatever uh this is part of the power toys thing um let me bring it up i don't remember the name of it um called power toys run um so i have it set to alt space it's actually pretty neat you can swap between uh like existing uh so like that'll launch things and um you can like list processes and stuff so like yeah discord here is open so you know, I can swap between things. So, like, this is running discord.dxe, and that'll, like, pop up. I mean, you can't see it, but it'll pop up things or whatever. So, if I, um, you know, do, like, terminal. So, it sees the Windows terminal is running. You know, I can open up another terminal. I can open up, you know, PowerShell or whatever if I wanted to. Just... It's a nice little thing. You can do simple, like, you know, 
math in it and things like that. It's nothing. It's nothing amazing. It'll search uh, files as well. Um, so like I can open up, you know, download my downloads folder here. Um, but yeah, it's kind of neat. I like it. There are a lot of really cool things you can do with the uh, with the power toys. Uh, power toys is a um, it it is a Microsoft thing, but it's like not an official Microsoft thing. It's made by Microsoft people, but it's open source, and like other people can contribute to it and everything. It's it's a pretty great piece of software. Um, so they have in here they have this fancy zones thing, which is kind of like a um like a Tyler. So you can do like Windows and tilde and you can like set these or you can go into like custom and make your own like sets and then you just do shift drag and you can drag them into their tile it's not it's not like you know dynamic like you'd expect like a tiling window manager but it's still pretty good to like you know kind of tile out your windows and there's a bunch of different settings and stuff for it um file explorer preview you can have a preview for svg and markdown which is kind of neat uh, image resizer, which is a, a neat way of, like, an easy way of just resizing a bunch of images or a single image to, you know, different type or whatever, you know, JPEG, whatever, and resolutions, um, you know, this resizing by a percentage. That's pretty handy when you just need to shrink something down to throw it on social media. Um, keyboard managers, whatever, I don't use that. That'd be useful for like remapping a Mac keyboard to a Windows layout or something like that. Uh, power rename is you know like a batch rename thing. You can use like regex and stuff to rename things. Power tools run, and then the shortcut guide is when you hold down the Windows key, it'll bring up a, a an overlay showing you all the different things you can do while holding the Windows key. It's kind of a neat thing just to you know have around. But Power Toys is pretty sweet. <laughs> you should, man. Power Toys is pretty good. I need to update mine. And they have like a... I'm on 1.8.1. They have 1.8.2 out. I guess I ran off Steve. That's fine. <laughs> Um, uh, you have sufficiently distracted me and I am a okay with that. You can, you can go on your drive, sir. Uh, I never used power toys in windows seven. Um, so I couldn't really tell you, but I mean the power toys that I use on windows 10 is pretty neat. Alright, yeah, good to see you too, Eric. You take care, man. <laughs> yeah, squirrel. Um, let's see. Alright. Oh, later, Steve. Take it easy, man. Uh, what was I gonna do? I was gonna work with Docker, but I'd have to restart the stream for that. Ugh. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's cool. Ah oh, yeah, okay. Kevin just told me he had some uh, Korean like beef rice bowl thing for dinner. It's pretty good. Got it from HelloFresh. We've been we've been subscribed to HelloFresh for quite a while now, and I enjoy it. You know, we we pay for like a four days, so we get four meals for four servings per meal. So you know, we have a bunch of extra, and we use that for like lunches and stuff. It's 
it's about $120, I think, for the four meals. Which isn't too bad when you consider all the ingredients and stuff you get in there. Um, but it works for Nessa and I, you know, having lunches and stuff. It's pretty great. I know, like, you know, my parents and, you know, my sister and their kid, like, it's like five people. It just, there, there's no way that would work. It just, it wouldn't be enough food and it'd just be too expensive for what they have to buy and everything. But for Nessa and I, it's a perfect thing. She generally cooks them, but sometimes I help. I'm not very much help, but I try. Um, but I like them. Man, I wish I should have more water. Oh well. Um, so Steve, you heard about uh, heard about Rocco's new in new venture that he's heading on. He he tweeted something about it. Yeah, it's um, it's a podcast called Linux User Space. Uh, I think he said it was going to be focused on um, like desktop and user space kind of stuff, not so much you know random news or you know advanced stuff. Just or you know nothing about servers or admin or anything like that. Just you know more uh, more stuff about desktop and all and apps and things like that hopefully it doesn't turn into like a distro show but you know hopefully it can cover more about new apps that are coming out or something like that that'd be really awesome we definitely need that do I still have this page up I do. I, uh, so I have this as a page that I made. Um, let me, I asked him already. Let me, let me get it so I don't get the wrong names wrong. Uh, it's going to be him, Dan Simmons, Joey Lamoth from Biddle and Leo Chavez from Mintcast. So the four of them should be pretty fun. But yeah, this was a, this was like a blog site that I, I put up on GitLab pages and never really did anything with. <laughs> I should, uh, should actually write for this, but it's, <laughs> there's just some random page. I was messing around with, uh, Hugo. That's the static site generator thing. I think I'll uh, pull that down. I'd have to get Hugo in here to new single called Broken Glass. Make sure you go check it out. It sounds good. And for today's instinct spotlight, Swaddle is back with his brand new song, Heroes. So what you what you got going on this evening, Steve? Uh no, I well I, I've been on the insider preview. I'm actually on the, the next version at this point. I've just been rolling on the insider builds. Um, I know a lot of people who have had it held back, but I, I force my stuff. So if it breaks, it breaks, whatever. If it breaks, it's fine by me. <laughs> See, quick install. Of course, the cat's gonna scratch on my desk now, or on my door rather. That's 
That's what I want, right? Okay, let's see. Linux 64-bit dev. That's cool. Just finished dinner. Chilling. <laughs> yeah, I'm here. For better or worse. <laughs> Go dev. Yeah, I actually didn't expect anybody to show up. I was I was just going to stream because I just felt like it. But somebody showed up, so I'm like, hey, I'll do that. We'll do that. That's fine. I can't um, create new. I guess that'd be a new post, right? I mean, do I have to? Yeah, it's gotta use the archetype. Okay. So I know I'm not I'm not that enthusiastic or <laughs> entertaining tonight, but it's all good. I'm uh I'm actually in Discord if you wanted to join that. Um, but I get if you're not. The guy that screams fire? What? <laughs> that sounds way more intense and exciting than me. <laughs> yeah, it's cool, man. You, you you do what you need to. Hmm. I'll just close all this. Oh, my camera thing's flipping out. It's not surprising. Just trying to find something real quick.
AKS about us featuring Winter. And it's time for a throwback. I've been hearing this song everywhere in China. And I think I play a Vigi game. Because that's what I do. Hello, sir. Oh, hey, Steve. How goes, man? Oh, it goes. It goes. Hello, YouTube land. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I doubt anyone's going to watch this because I just named it like just streaming and streaming for no reason and whatnot. But I saw it was posted and I, and I did a double post in um, Middle Telegram. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I said, all hecklers. <laughs> Calling yep. all hecklers. Now's the time. <laughs> yeah, I figured. This is, uh, I'm gonna play some Division 2 on Stadia. Because I got the new fiber internet, I can stream and play this at the same time. Entering safe area. It, that fiber internet is something else. Gotta figure out what I was doing. So, how's life been, man? Okay. It's been okay? It's been okay. Work's been fine. Hasn't been too busy on you? No, unfortunately, location I'm at is um, <clears throat> a little slow. Um, my, my previous location is still rocking with the sales. They're up double digits. But, um, yeah, I don't know if it's the amount of retail that we have around our area or what. I can't figure it out, but it's a beautiful store. I'm happy to be there. I got a real good assistant, although she's a smart ass. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm the old guy, right? I've been around for 38 years, and uh, I'm going to be 64 this year. She's, I think, 38. So I'll be talking about something about when I first started. She'll go, dude, I was only two then. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I get that a little bit. I mean, I'm not nearly as old as you are, but at the same time, like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I talked to my coworker, you know, who might be, I think he just turned 20 or something, like, lat, like earlier this year or something. And, uh, you know, I, I, tell, I just talk to him about, like, you know, things that I expect him to know, but then I'm like, oh, yeah, you're... You're like 20. Yeah. But, um, I'll say. Is the game uh, audio really loud? Um, I'm. Let's see. I uh, muted the stream. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, you can hear it. Is it really loud, though? Like... No. Okay. Well, remind. I said I'm old enough to be your father. Then I could take you over my knee. And... Yeah, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> yeah, I know. I would, I, she... But um... yeah, so I mean, it's 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 it's, 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 it's going well. Yeah, well, that's good, man. Yeah, I had today off of work, so I was pretty happy about that. Nice. We got um, yeah, we... we got Juneteenth off for. <laughs> From work today. Yeah. Yeah, we were told that uh, we were because since Fourth of July falls on a Saturday, we'll be able to take off the third off, so we'll be able to be able to have a three-day weekend. Thus, managers. So. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Too bad the lowly retail worker doesn't get that same privilege. No. But they can work their way up if they want. Or they can, you know, go somewhere else. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Retail takes yeah. it out of you, man. Yeah, um, like my, my sister-in-law, she's a bank officer, and, and it's like, do you ever work? You know, it's, <laughs> <laughs> I'm off for a holiday. <laughs> yeah. What holiday this time? It's, but she's been doing it. She's really good at, it, at her job, so. Yeah, we get, we don't get a whole lot of holidays off. Like, we're not constantly off work, but we do... We get a fair number of being a school system and all that. Well, I do now that I'm a permanent employee. When I was a contractor, that was a very different story. 
as a contractor is very like you know you work because if you don't you don't get paid right but yeah in retail it's like we're, we're open 365 and yeah I did retail yeah. IT and that was awful and I did I did some retail work before and it really was one of those like you know, all the all the time you're thinking like oh these people are probably enjoying time with their with their families and I'm not <laughs> like yeah like oh when, yeah like I had to work so I did a call center job working for Carter's which is like a baby clothes retail store uh huh um. I did their like IT stuff and it sucked because I had to leave like our family Thanksgiving in the middle of the day to go work and I had to pull like 12 hour shifts over Thanksgiving and Black Friday and everything and I was just like this is, this is awful I don't want to do this <laughs> yeah it, the, you know after so many years it, it becomes just like um, a regular thing but yeah you know uh, miss a lot of family things but although back in the day we were not many guards. Christmas, see, Black Thanksgiving Black. and Christmas and New Year's, we used to close relatively early. Built over an underground parking um, or some years we closed at 4 o'clock, others it was at 6, levels. and then Look for an elevator. a few years ago they decided to go, um, you know, whatever the store hours are, you know, if you're 8 to 10, you're 8 to 10, if it's 6 to 12, or 24 hours, you open all those hours. Yeah. Because... Not everybody celebrates the holidays, like no matter which one it is. It's okay, I get that, but this comes with the territory, right? Yeah. That's why I'm planning my retirement to uh, be uh, hopefully uh, next. Uh, I think I'm almost down to three years. But I can, leave, I guess, technically retire at six, sixty-six and four months. Almost there, man. Yeah. So that, you know, what are you, you going to do with yourself? Um, I'll probably, uh. This place was a gold mine for looters. I told my Worry assistant, too much by then she should have her own store. I'll come work anyway, for her and, 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 and uh, yeah. tell her so I can only work way. special hours. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> if I'm still able, uh, and, uh, okay. you know, people still want to watch me, I'll still maybe, you know, really, uh, by that, by that time, maybe, um, you know, uh, have more time to, to really spend on the channel and, um, you know, be the real old tech bulk guy. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and probably do something, you know, like, uh, I'd probably work part-time a little bit. But after, you know, uh, by that time, I'll be 40, so I'll have my 39th year in the uh, end of October. So, uh, okay, close to um, 42, 43 years in. I think that's enough, especially in retail. Yeah, that is. That sounds awful. Like that long in retail, <laughs> just I don't know how you've done it, man. Yeah, I mean, I like being with people, like meeting people. Um, you know, it, it it can be really rough at times with the customers, and I, you know, but I I really relish when I can kind. Of turn them over a little bit you know they come in you know uh I, i've over the years i've had many customers that you know would, would barely give me the time of day and then uh you know by me always taking care of them or talking to them and that uh you know they come looking for me for for stuff you know oh yeah yeah you know and especially my one store i was there for 16 years so i really knew well, my customers really well it was hard leaving, but you know, I did 16 years at one spot. I, I could have stayed there till I retired, but I was looking for something else. So, but I don't think I can ever do it. I, I could have never done an office job. Uh, I did a stint in uh, factory work. I went for the National Harvester. Um, that was that was awful. I mean, I mean, not, nothing against those that want to work that that, that really like that kind of you know. With customers, you know, you're a good, a good, uh, good with tools. You know, like there was this old guy I remember him, but one of those that would, uh, you know, he was this like skinny old 
dude in the seventies at the time, but we put it like uh, they'd have these listening sticks that they put them to the big um, um, tractor engines, and he'd tell you what was wrong with it just by the sound, you know, like one of those guys. Uh, yeah, okay. that was kind of some like mechanical guru. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, and they take it apart. And sure enough, what he said was you know wrong in there. I couldn't have done that. That's my wife. I, I tried to sit as I went to school for a uh, auto mechanic. Um, cause, you know, to get me out of uh, factory work. And uh, got sidetracked in the management. Worked a couple of, I worked at a dealership and then worked for, for uh, a, a um, auto center before it went defunct. Mm -hmm. Almost went to work for Kmart's, Kmart's Auto Center, and I saw this ad for a uh, company I've been working for, and they had this like full, half, like almost a full page ad of all the benefits and that. So I called and set up an interview, because really. uh, I wasn't due to start at Kmart for another week. And uh, all of a sudden I get a call from the DM uh, from Kmart, and says, I need you to start tomorrow. And tomorrow was the day that I set up the interview. And I'm like, well, I can start Thursday, and you told me I wasn't going to start next week. And after all this, I went through on three interviews with this guy, and uh, he was, like, really nice. And all of a sudden, he said, well, you either want the job or you don't. Oh, one said, of, yeah, one of those yeah. guys. And, and I said, you know what? I get, and I you know, just took a long shot and said, I guess I don't. Could have been a lot worse. Yep. So... And hung up on Civilian forces you know. approaching from the west. Okay, so what's going on? We have division agents on site. We've got a shot at taking this control point. If your operatives can help, but, we um, really appreciate some assistance. But you know, it's all right. What yeah. I chose oh, to get to the surface and help the civilians. But I always hated six, like when you you go to like one agent put out of action. You place. you know you're trying to get a job and you're like, hey, I can start on this day, and they're like, well, can you start tomorrow? And it's like. Yeah, because I'm totally prepared for that, which is why I told you I want to start at this other day, right? And, like, you know, as a contractor, like, I had to, you know, I had to kind of, like, realize, like, what I was in the grand scheme. Because there are, you know, the, the company as a contractor is not going to treat you well like they're gonna treat you like you're just some an expendable dude that they can just let go and it don't matter at all and that's whatever but like at the same time if you're willing to just let me go for no you know for any reason at any time i'm i don't see the need to give you a two-week notice if i want to leave <laughs> like yeah i'm just gonna tell you hey i'm leaving like i know people will say you know it's a good look to give a two-week notice and all that but Realistically, yeah, like, you're not gonna give me notice, so. Yeah, you know, there's some places that I guess don't technically deserve it, depending on how long you work there. You might not even have to put it down in the reference. But, you know. but I, I love it, you know, today's day and age, it's, uh, you get a text now and it's almost quitting. You know, you don't even have the gall to call you and say, you know, I think this didn't work out or, or I have other issues going on. I'm not showing up for work anymore. Okay. Yep. But I mean, you know, like I tried to tell my dad, because he's, you know, he's old school, right? Like, he's big on the whole loyalty to the company and all that kind of stuff. And I'm just like, man, that company will drop you and then, like, like, they're, like you're nothing. There's no loyalty left. It's not, you can be as loyal as you want. Doesn't mean they're going to be. Like, like you treat it, treat it for exactly what it is. It's, it's a job. They're a company. They're an organization that needs you. If they don't need you, then you move on. Like, don't don't feel like you owe them anything. If anything, they owe you. You're producing wealth for them. Like, and the thing is, you know, it what exactly what I told them bore out. You know, I didn't want it to, but like, I'd rather not be right about it. But yeah, you know, that's really the case. You know, this company he had been with them for like 13 years, and it's like, yeah, now they just lay you off like you're nothing. Dude, that's that's the reality of work these days. You know, maybe back in the '60s and '70s when he was working, you know, might have been different. But who's that over there? But with my my, my long 
longevity and you know I remember all my friends like they they went to school and they had all these tech jobs and they were making so much money and pretty much all of them over the years they you know especially you know would you know uh, they really got in on that big tech bubble and then when it busted they were left high and dry you know and, uh, oh yeah not that I ever wish them, you know, ill in that, but like slow and steady wins the race. And now, you know, after all these years, I'm, I'm making pretty decent money for retail. You know, they could easily dump me and put someone in new that would make almost half my salary. But, you know, you can't get rid of the experience in that. But, you know, it's been the, you know, the last couple of years have been really good. And uh, I got a boss that built, but he, uh, he's behind me and actually his boss too. Uh, I haven't had that kind of um, where I felt wanted in a long time, you know. So yeah, and like my boss is great, but he's also you know the kind of person that's like you know it's a job, like treat it like it's a job. It's not you know as much as he loves keeping me around and he wants to keep me around if. You know, the organization decides differently, then so be it. Oh, right? yeah. Yep. Yep. But, um, you know, and they, they uh, help put food on the table, and they... Yep. Yeah. House out of the deal and all that stuff, so, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying it's a bad thing, right? Like, I mean, it's nice to have a job, especially right now. And it's nice oh, to yeah, have a, oh. a job where I'm not, you know, killing myself physically trying to make a living. Oh, to be an essential worker, I tell you. <laughs> yeah. Man, it's, it's astonishing the number of people around here that aren't wearing masks. Like, boom. <laughs> so you guys know there's still a pandemic going on, right? Yeah, especially a lot of the southern state of Florida. I mean, I worry about Eric because it's what a 46% increase. Yeah. And I mean, I knew it was gonna happen. Like, it'd be silly not to think it was gonna happen. Yeah, Illinois is opening up a little bit more, a little bit of time. But the problem is they didn't require, like, it's not a legal requirement to wear a mask. And that's, that's a problem because if you don't make it a legal requirement, people are not going to do it. Yeah. Well, you know, like, um, so uh, the state had mandated all retail in that. Um, to put up signs that say, you know, you're required to wear a mask. But there's also the caveat, you know, if they, they have an online health condition that... Um, yeah, a lot of them use that as a bullshit, experience, right. uh, bullshit excuse not to do it. So I had this young mom with her two kids in today, no one ever wore a mask, and this customer got really irate. And I'm going to call corporate, I'm sorry, well, you know, why didn't you say anything? Because we're told not to. Yep. That's the really unfortunate part about retail. It's like, I always felt like, and I don't know if this is the case with you guys, but like, I always felt like the corporate folks had, like, they had no idea what it was like to actually work. Mm -hmm. And they, they always enact, like, stupid policies that you're like, you you know this is like not how things are, right? Like <laughs> Yeah. But uh, all they're looking you know, to take care of that customer, but they're not there at the time. Try to, I I mean I fail sometimes. I mean there's no doubt about even at all after all these years. But um you know, I try to do my best, but there's you know Yeah. I don't know, whoever was the person who came up with the idea of customer is always right was a massive idiot. <laughs> and I know you can't really speak publicly on that one, but... Like, yeah, it's just... 
that's not really the case. And people, people take it way too seriously. They're like, I can do whatever I want because I'm the customer. Like, no, no, that's not how this works. And like today, you know, I went to pick up a coffee for Nessa this morning from Starbucks and I went inside to pick it up. Um, you know, they don't have any seating or anything. This I just walked in, you know. Right. But, um, you know, I went to pick it up and they asked this guy who came in, like, you know, hey, can you, uh, do you have a mask, sir? And he's like, I don't need no mask. And they're like, well, it's kind of our policy that you need a mask if you're going to be in here. And he's like, fuck you guys, and like, left. I'm like, I'm like, really, dude? Like, yeah. You're, you're that full of yourself? Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> I got a couple stories to tell you one of these days, but. Yeah, not on stream. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because there's still, I mean, there's like people that still believe it's false, so. Oh, yeah. They think it's like a hoax or whatever. And it's like, yeah. And yeah, you'll think that until you get it. And then you'll be like, oh, the government's not doing enough to protect me. Like, yeah, have some more. Yeah. Exactly. Vital signs critical. But this game looks like it just runs so smooth. I mean. uh, yeah, this is on Stadia. This is uh, right. it's being streamed to my PC from Google servers. It's a pretty great game. It's actually one of the better running games on Stadia too. But this, um, I was streaming it to me at 4K 60 frames a second. And you know, 4K takes a little bit of a uh, little bit of bandwidth, like a little bit of speed to, to do on Stadia, but not as much as you think it would. Oh, uh -huh. no, I made a mistake! I made a mistake! I'm dead. Agent <laughs> disease. Oh, that's frustrating. Uh. I don't think I have the patience to do all that again. <laughs> No, not tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just throw the throw the camera up there and chat for a bit. But yeah, it's um Stadia is a great service, and what's awesome is like there's no downloads, there's no updates, there's none of that. You just you go in the browser, you click play, and the game just starts. Nice. And, uh, like, if you want to buy a game, you go in the store, you click buy, you know, you, if you're, it uses Google Pay, so you put your credit card already in there. If you already have Android, it's probably already in there. Um, you know, you just click pay, and then it just unlocks, and you press play, and you start playing. There's no, no need to download it or update it or anything like that. You just buy and then play. It's, and for somebody, especially for people who don't have a lot of, like, time you know like mm -hmm. people who work or whatever they only have maybe an hour or two to play games this is great because you don't have to you know you don't have to like mess about with downloading an update or any of that you, you can just sit down on your computer or chromecast or whatever you're using grab your controller your keyboard and mouse and just click play and go and the load times in the games are actually really good they have like you know ssds and stuff in their servers so they load pretty quickly I'm like I, I enjoy the service. A lot of people, you know, have their complaints, and some of them are valid. Like if you have a data cap, it will chew through your data cap pretty quickly. Um, but that's so that's a concern. A lot of people say that their internet's not good enough. I think people should try it just in case, because some people have really good internet and have problems based on like where they are, like how far away they are from the servers and stuff. Uh huh. Um. But the actual like bandwidth requirements for it are really not that not that high end. 
you can get by uh, doing a 1080p stream on like a like a 20 like 15 or 20 megabit connection you could have like a pretty standard dsl connection and be able to play these games um and because they're all streamed to you your actual computer doesn't need to be powerful at all because all the rendering and stuff is done in google's servers Mm -hmm. So you, and basically any machine that can watch a YouTube stream can play Stadia. So even if you have like an older laptop or a Chromebook or you know something that's low power, you can you can just play it on that because it's all just streamed to you. Yeah, because I know I got uh, I haven't played um, a game in a while, but when I you know, would bring up either uh, I, I forget what um, tank game that I had. It's not World of Tanks or whatever. War Thunder. One of the, yeah, and uh, even though it's downloaded to the PC, when uh, it starts up, it looks for an update, and it's loading, downloading an update, and it's like it does it takes a few minutes to uh, get going. Oh yeah. Like here, um, so you, on the desktop here, you can see if you're looking at the stream, um, mm -hmm. there's, I have this as a separate window. It normally it'd just be a Chrome tab, right? But in here you got, you know, the home in the store and you just scroll down and see your games. And like, all I have to do is, you know, like click play and it just start, it starts loading the game. And it takes, you know, a second to show this little splash screen. And then it just jumps right into streaming the game. And, you know, it's just like the normal game. It'll, you know, start showing you the whole, like, you know, Ubisoft and Division 2 and all this stuff. Just like you would on, like, a console or something like that. And Stadia, I haven't experienced... I've never experienced any wait times. Like, I've never had to wait in a queue to get to a game. It's all it's all just been click and go and like any of these games you know I have a bunch on there and uh, you know their store is here and they have you know certain games they feature new releases etc and all you got to do is just like uh, in World Combat here you just go to the page for the game and you click you know buy and then you fill out your stuff and then that's really it. Like you just click buy and this, this turns into play and you just start playing. <laughs> no need to download that, or anything. And how's the pricing on the games? Uh, they're usually their full price, but they do have sales. So like they have these pro deals here, um, where you can get certain games like, uh, you know, Borderlands three here, I think is like $30 on sale right now. It's about half uh -huh. off. Um, these are pro, so these are the deals you get for being a pro subscriber, which is $10 a month, but every month they give you some free games. Um, so like any of these games that have the little red pro by them uh -huh. are all games that I got free. So like Elder Scrolls, Panzer Dragoon, these two, these two, one there, one there, another one, another one. Two there, two there, two there. Another one, another one. Like they, they give you a bunch of free games to play. Wow. Well, and well, they're free, and I say in air quotes, free. You know, because uh -huh. you're paying ten dollars a month for the service. Right. But it's not just for the free games. You get the additional discounts whenever they go on sale, like these these pro deals. And then you also get up to four K HDR and surround sound streaming. Um, the HDR. And surround sound stuff works on the Chromecast. So if you buy the, the the bundle, which is like the Premiere bundle, you get a Stadia controller and a Chromecast Ultra and three months of Stadia Pro. And the Chromecast Ultra just connects to your TV's HDMI connection, right? And uh -huh. then your game is streamed to the... When you connect to Stadia, your game is streamed to the Chromecast to your TV... But the controller actually doesn't connect to the Chromecast. The controller connects to your Wi-Fi network and talks directly to the server that's playing the game. So you yeah. don't you don't actually talk directly to the the box in your house. You're talking directly to the Google server, 
and then when and then whenever inputs you make on the controller go up to up the internet to the server then the changes in the stream go back down to your chromecast oh jeez and it actually works really well i mean you saw me playing the game uh -huh. right? yeah it works really well and i was playing with a keyboard and mouse which you think would be very sensitive to input latency and like lag and stuff and i, I had no problems it's a it's quite the awesome service and they have a where you can get you can try it you can get a month free of stadia pro and then you know you can and so right now there's like five or six games you can get for stadia pro so if you like if you tried it out today or tomorrow or whatever you could get you know all those games for pro now you can't play them unless you stay with as a pro member right uh huh because they're part of the pro subscription so you get the the one month the pro you get all those games you can try it out you know see how it works on your connection how it works on your machine whatever and if you like it keep playing it if you don't just cancel and all that but so you can either get the free pro games but if you want to you don't even have to like be a pro subscriber you can just buy the games normally like you would on any other platform and just play them you don't even have to have a subscription okay which is pretty awesome. And yeah, the, I mean, the games are expensive because for whatever reason, people have this idea that like games need to be cheap and they don't. Like these game developers and publishers and stuff, they put a lot of money and a lot of time oh, and yeah. a lot of effort. And people are like, eh, I don't want to pay full price for a game. It's like, what? Like, you're basically telling the developers nothing... Whatever you do is not worth what you're worth. You're worth less than what you're what you think you're worth. And that's that's offensive. That's awful. Right. I mean, I get that people have let, you know, have limited funds, but it, I mean, if you can't pay for it, just don't get it. Like I don't know. And that that was kind of a problem with like a uh, Feral Interactive and Aspire and stuff. These porting houses that would port games from Windows and stuff to Linux or Mac, and you know Steam had their whole Steam Play thing, right? So when people would find out, like, oh, you know, this there's rumors that this game is coming to Linux, they would buy the Windows version, and then just wait for it to come out on Linux, and then they just play it on Linux. But the problem is when they do that. The people who ported it to Linux don't get the sale because they didn't buy it when, you know, it doesn't count as a uh -huh. Linux purchase. So it doesn't go to right. the porting house. That's like, that's that's really crappy. <laughs> but people don't care. They, You know that. People will get yeah. one over on people as any chance they get. They're all scum. <laughs> but, but anyway, yeah. So Stadia is pretty good. Cool. But, yeah, I think I'm going to drop the stream. All right. There you go. All right. Anybody who's watching, don't think you are, but take it easy, guys. Well, you had up to three a minute ago. and You know, that's something, right?